Now we're learning new information about the arrest of an actor named Nathan Chasing Horse. Good evening, everyone. I'm Jim Snyder. And I'm Marie Mortera. He's an actor turned alleged cult leader charged with multiple sex crimes. News 3's Katie Munch has been going through the 50 page arrest document. Now, investigators got a tip back in October tying Nathan Chasing Horse to sexual assault allegations. And after a months long investigation, they raided the home he shares with his five wives in North Las Vegas. Then Chasing Horse, a former Dances with Wolves actor, is accused of raping indigenous girls younger than 16 over two decades. Neighbor Natalie Linderes says she watched as SWAT placed him under arrest. Um, asking them to come out slowly with their hands up. Um, about 10 minutes later was when about five women came out of the house, one of them um, holding a baby in their arms. According to a 50-page arrest report, this happened across multiple state lines and eventually at his home here in North Las Vegas, where he was arrested on Tuesday. Investigators interviewed one victim who said she met Chasing Horse in California when she was about six years old. She claims they grew a bond and Chasing Horse adopted her as his granddaughter in a spiritual way. After a few years, she said he gifted her with things like clothes, toiletries, and money. When she turned 16, she called Chasing Horse believing he had healing powers and could save her mom who had gotten cancer. Investigators say he invited the teen to his home here in North Las Vegas. He's accused of telling the teen she needed to offer her body to spirits because her mom was so sick. And yeah, it's just a good neighborhood to live in. So it's really scary, especially because I have a 14 year old living here in the home. So to know that this is going on literally right in front of our noses is really scary. Chasing Horse is also accused of recording sexual assaults and arranging sex with the victims for other men who allegedly paid him. And investigators have identified at least six alleged victims. And although Chasing Horse is accused in other states, the arrest Tuesday stems from crimes he's accused of committing here in Clark County. And Chasing Horse charges his charges include sex trafficking, sexual assaults of a child under the age of 16, and child abuse. A man wanted for a kidnapping up in Oregon who has some ties to a crime here in Las Vegas takes his own life after an hours long standoff with police. The woman he held captive and tortured now in critical condition. And according to Clark County court documents, this is not the first crime. Now News 3 is asking for answers. Our Brett Forrest joins us live outside the Regional Justice Center. Brett, this suspect faced decades in prison for similar charges in Clark County. So why didn't he? Well, Jim Marie, good evening. To answer that question, I exclusively spoke to Clark County District Attorney Steve Wolfson today, and he tells me what it comes down to is a plea deal and a victim who was not willing to come to court. 36-year-old Benjamin Obadiah Foster killing himself during a standoff late Tuesday in Southern Oregon after eluding capture for a week from what appears to be a self-inflicted gunshot wound. Police also finding two bodies Monday night during their search. At this point, we do believe uh, Benjamin Foster is the suspect of that uh, double homicide. On January 24th, Oregon police finding a woman unconscious, bound, and near death in Grants Pass, Oregon. On Wednesday, she's still in critical but stable condition. That sparked off an intensive manhunt over the last several days. This isn't Foster's first run-in with the law, a lengthy rap sheet in Las Vegas dating back years, with prior charges of domestic battery, kidnapping, and others. So we take these cases pretty seriously, as you can see. This was the file, which is much larger than most files for this kind of case. According to Clark County Court documents obtained by CNN, one victim in 2019, Foster's girlfriend at the time, told police he strangled her to the point of unconsciousness several times and kept her tied up for most of the next two weeks. Nobody can anticipate what somebody's going to do when they're released from prison. And it's, it's sad. It's um, not something that prosecutors like to learn about. With the case file so large, why didn't Foster receive a more severe punishment in Nevada? But at the end of the day, if we don't have a willing participant, a willing victim that wants to come to court, and this victim did not want to come to court, uh, we have to do what we can to salvage uh, a conviction. Foster eventually entering plea deals, pleading guilty to one felony count of battery, which constitutes domestic violence with substantial bodily harm and a misdemeanor. He was sentenced to a maximum 30 months in jail, but given credit for two years already served. 
Now, plea bargains are reached in about 99% of cases. That's the nature of the criminal justice system, the DA tells me. Now, in terms of that uncooperative victim from a couple of years ago, he says that is a constant challenge when it comes to cases of domestic violence. These victims are just often too scared to come forward, but he stressed that there are resources to help them to come forward. Well, steps are being taken to clean up the resort corridor. In tonight's Operation Crime and Justice, News 3's Denise Ross joins us live. And Denise, the court system is going after chronic offenders. Yeah, Jim, there are some defendants who have been trespassed 30 or 40 times from strip resorts, and they keep coming back oftentimes to commit other crimes. Now a new specialty court has been created to address some of those issues. Many times these repeat offenders are even being banned from the resort corridor. Got it. I've been here once and never, never even seen the sign, so it's an iconic thing to do. It's the welcome to Las Vegas most visitors imagine. Uh, we wanted to do it for my son's birthday. All smiles with family and friends in front of a world famous sign, a picture perfect image of tourism on the Las Vegas Strip. When you guys are out on the Strip, do you feel safe? Completely, totally. We've been um, different times from early in the morning to very late at, late at night and we feel completely safe, fine um, being out there. But over at the Regional Justice Center, another side to the story. All right, Mr. Griffin, uh, how do you plead to the offense of trespass from November 26, 2022? This is the courtroom of Judge Melissa Saragossa. I have reviewed his criminal history, including a number several offenses along Las Vegas Boulevard order out corridor is 19 arrests, eight citations, 10 failures to appear. Presiding over resort corridor court, a new way to deal with a very old problem. District Attorney Steve Wolfson explains. We're focusing primarily on the repeat and prolific offenders, those people that keep coming back to the resort corridor time and time again and commit crimes. The court began hearing cases just a few weeks ago, funneling the majority of criminal complaints along the strip in downtown Las Vegas to one judge, from larceny to robbery, prostitution to trespassing. There is a prolific problem of crime on the strip. Um, we read about it, uh, some of the horrific felonies that have occurred, but a lot of things you don't see, the misdemeanors that are hotel security officers are having to deal with daily. How do you plead to the misdemeanor charge soliciting prostitution? And many defendants in this courtroom will face the same court order. I am suspending that sentence conditioned upon one thing. You stay out of the order out corridor. <laughs> Banned from the strip for six months to a year. Should they return, they'll pick up another charge. They go back and violate the court order. That's a, that's a reason to, to uh, jail them. Clark County Commission Chairman Jim Gibson. You could say the lifeblood of the economy of the state of Nevada is very dependent upon success along Las Vegas Boulevard. And success means a good experience for the traveling public. And Gibson says complaints have started showing up in travel website reviews. Here's a few from the end of last year. Awful family experience, horrible, and puke and cry. Many of the complaints referring to the number of homeless people sleeping on the street, an issue the county's care team is also addressing. We would offer anyone wraparound services. We'd put them under a roof. We'd provide them with meals and clothing and medical attention. According to Metro Crime Stats from last week, the Convention Center Area Command, which includes the Strip, reported significant jumps in drug offenses, weapons violations, and arrests for aggravated assault. And in many cases, the police and the courts are seeing the same faces again and again. It's for the period of six months, you are to stay out of the order out corridor. That there are some people that uh, have been trespassed from the properties 30, 40, 50 times and keep coming back. Back at the Welcome to Las Vegas sign. Do you think that's a good idea though if people do commit crimes out here? Hey Tom, you can't come back. Oh, oh, absolutely. absolutely. I wish absolutely. they'd done it at home as well. <laughs> 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 Ireland needs it too. Visitors say they appreciate the effort. Wonderful. Pick them up. Yes, for sure. Knowing their safety is top priority. Tourists said they're never coming back to Las Vegas because of what they experienced. Uh, we can't tolerate that. Hi everybody, I'm Reed Cowan from News 3 Las Vegas. We want to thank you for checking out our YouTube channel. Remember, you can always see more of our videos by clicking on the video links. And also don't forget, 
to click that subscribe button so that you don't miss out on any of our YouTube updates. Thanks for watching.